Remember the feeling of a brand new Mac? A Mac without rainbow wheels? A Mac that didn't cause headaches or frustration? Well, in this video, I will show you 10 ways you can make any Mac faster. All it takes is to disable a few things here and there. Does your Mac suffer from any of these things? Mac boot up slower? Overheating computer? Browser crashes? And frequent beach balls? Well, these simple steps I will share with you after won't take much time, but will greatly help you to improve your Mac performance. If you do these activities regularly, you won't have to worry about the need to speed up your Mac again. So here are 10 ways you can make your Mac faster. Some apps are more power hungry than others and can slow your Mac to a crawl. To see which apps are eating up your system resources, you can use the activity monitor. You can open it from the utilities folder of your application folder and use Spotlight to find it. So how to use activity monitor to speed up your Mac? Activity monitor details five different resources, CPU, memory, energy, disk, and network users. If your Mac is running slowly, pay special attention to the CPU section. It shows how processes affect the CPU activity. When you're running intensive apps like video editors or games, they may use more of your CPU capacity. Those apps will be listed at the top of the list in the CPU tab. If some app is using a lot of CPU power, you can quit it by selecting the app or process and clicking the X in the left-hand corner of the activity monitor. The memory tab shows how much memory each process or app is using. The memory pressure graph at the bottom of the window help understand whether your Mac manages memory efficiently. If it's green, you shouldn't worry, but if it turns yellow or red, it means your Mac is running out of free RAM. Close the app that are on the top of the list if you don't need them running. It's also important to check the energy tab. The most battery draining apps will be listed first. See if you need them running. Otherwise, quit those programs to prolong the time between charges. There are also system processes listed in the activity monitor. These usually have words like system, helper, assistant, and core in their name. To display them all, go to the view menu and select system processes. It may seem obvious, but it is something that is often overlooked. If your computer is running slow, look at all the apps you have open. Do you really need mail and the app store running in the background? Can you cope with having calendar, reminder, and notes closed when you're not using them? If so, just close them. Once you quit the apps you don't need, your computer will have more RAM, which helps run the apps you are using much smoothly. The easiest way to see which apps are running is by looking at the dock on the screen's bottom. If the program is running, it will have a dot underneath. Another option is to press Command plus Tab and see which apps are open in the app switch. Close all unnecessary apps by right-clicking on the dock icon and choosing Quit. Or select the app and press Command Q if you use the app switcher. So maintenance scripts are internal service tasks of the macOS itself. macOS runs them periodically to fix various system errors and inconsistencies. For example, they re-index certain databases for smoother Mac performance. If your Mac responds with delays, you can force run the maintenance scripts via terminal. Keep in mind that you will need an administrator password to run maintenance scripts through terminal. Open terminal either through the spotlight search or by navigating to the utilities folder in the application. In the terminal command bar. Enter sudo periodic daily weekly monthly. Enter that text, press return, and you will be asked to enter your administrator password. For security reasons, your password will not appear on screen. After you do that, your Mac will then perform three maintenance scripts. There won't be a status bar or percentage to show that the scripts are being run, but you'll know they're complete when the terminal prompt returns. It goes without saying that a clean startup helps speed up slow Mac. When your Mac launches faster, it takes less time to do anything. No waiting for Safari, Chrome, or Firefox to open. They open instantly. How do you get to such speed? Well, when your Mac boots up, it runs a lot of unnecessary apps, but it's quite easy to take control of it. Go to your system settings, general, and then click login item. Now find a program you don't immediately need when your Mac starts up and disable it. There are also unseen apps called launch agents that may slow your Mac down. For example, your internet download speed suddenly plummeted. How to speed up downloads on Mac? Delete background agents that cannibalize your internet speed. They can be disabled from the login items panel as well. Just make your way through the apps allowed in the background. 
Another proven way to speed up your MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, or iMac is to install the applications you don't need anymore. So how do you remove unwanted apps on your Mac? You may be surprised to find out that simply dragging them to the trash bin is not enough. It leaves gigabytes of junk behind. Dragging documents and movies to trash work fine, but apps should be installed completely. Whether you're running a newer macOS version like Ventura or Monterey, or an earlier macOS like Catalina or Mojave, the process of manually in installing apps remains relatively similar. Here's what you need to do. Open Finder, go to Applications, choose the app you want to delete, press Command plus Delete. Empty the trash by clicking the empty button in the upper right corner of the window. And that's it, the app is gone. If you recently updated your OS, you would be aware of the slowness that occurs when Spotlight is indexing. This only takes a few hours and then your Mac will be fine. But sometimes the indexing gets stuck and you need to speed up your Mac. To solve this problem, you need to re-index Spotlight by going to System Settings, Siri and Spotlight and clicking Spotlight Privacy at the bottom of the window. Now drag your hard drive from Finder into Privacy List. Once added, Remove it by clicking the minus sign. The indexing will start again, but hopefully after a few hours, it will finish properly and boost your max speed. If you have no memory slots available or are not able to upgrade like on the new M1 Max, you can free RAM instantly with Terminal. You can apply this trick when your system is running out of available memory. In other words, when a specific app freezes up and desperately needs some fresh memory, do this. Open Terminal via the launchpad, paste in the following command, sudo purge, then press return. You'll be asked to enter your system password, and after that, your RAM is free. Cache files are temporary data used to speed up processes. For example, a web browser will cache web pages to download the website faster when you revisit it. Sounds great, right? Actually, it is, but there is always a but. Over time, these cache files take much storage on your Mac. And instead of speeding up things, they slow your computer down. Let's look at emptying system cache on Mac. Let's start our cache clearing journey by deleting system cache files, which are files built on macOS system services generated for proper operation. To locate them, open the finder and from the go menu, choose go to folder. Now paste library slash caches. Press return. If you want to find out how much space it occupies, right click the caches folder and choose get info from the menu. You will see the size of the folder in the info window. To remove system cache files, browse through the com.apple folders you see and send files to the trash. Note that only files can be deleted. Keep the folders. Now what about emptying the user cache? Did you know that a single user cache folder may take gigabytes of space? For example, on my Mac it's almost 3 gigabytes and it's just one folder. So it's a good idea to remove user cache to reclaim valuable space and speed up your Mac. To clear the user cache manually, do the following. Open the finder and from the go menu, select go to folder, type in library slash caches and press return. There's an optional step. You can copy all the files to a different folder if something goes wrong and then back it up. Then make your way through each of the folders and clean out everything. Keep in mind to delete only the files from the folders and do not send the folders to the trash. Don't forget to empty the trash afterward. Just control click on the trash icon from the dock and choose empty trash. Now restart your Mac and it will create a new cache. So in the previous steps, we've removed the user cache, but as we mentioned, apps also generate cache files. So you may delete them as well. Some people believe that these files are needed, but deleting them is absolutely safe. Some apps may create more cache than others. For instance, Spotify, Xcode, and Steam. But removing the cache is still a piece of cake. You can get rid of the app cache on Mac by going to libraries slash caches from the go menu of the finder like we did before. There you'll find different app cache. For example, com.spotify.client, stores, Spotify cache, etc. Clear up these folders like we did with user cache. Press command A to highlight all the files, then right click them and move to trash. So once you've gotten rid of system and user cache files and also app cache, you can then proceed with browser cache. This will depend on what browser you're using, like Safari or Chrome or Firefox. But for this case, let's stick with the default browser, Safari. 
Safari. Deleting cache files in Safari is not as straightforward as in other browsers. However, it's not too complex if you follow the steps that I'm gonna explain. So there are two ways to do it. The first one is by navigating to history, clear history in the menu bar. This way though, you will lose your history information about visiting the website you may need sometime in the future. If you want to keep history, Here's another way to clear cache in Safari. Open Safari and go to settings from the menu bar. Then navigate to the advanced tab and make sure that the box next to the show develop menu in menu bar option is checked. Quit settings. Now navigate to develop and then empty caches. Finally, restart your browser. Keep in mind that you'll have to enter your login info once again, as it will be removed along with autofill details. A great tip to help you when you wonder how to speed up your Mac is to turn off visual effects. Sure, on Mac OS they look pretty, but who cares if your Mac is running slow. Turning off some of the features can greatly speed up your iMac or MacBook. So here is how to speed up a Mac by turning off the visual effects. Click on the system settings, desktop and dock, disable the following options, animate opening application, and automatically hide and show the dock. Next to the minimize windows using option, change the Jenny effect to the scale effect. And if you want the most bang for your buck, cleaning your hard drive is by far the best and easiest way to speed up your MacBook or iMac. Go through your hard drive and clean out everything that is slowing it down. But what is slowing down your Mac? What to look for? Well, this includes caches, logs, apps, widgets, hidden trash, and large and old files. So think of a car that has a heavy load in the trunk. For all its engine power, it cannot really go fast. The same happens on your Mac. Only your disk is stuffed with heavy files. To do this, go to system settings general and then storage click the eye icon next to the documents there should be your largest space wasters in my case these are movie files and video files review these and move them away onto an external drive or just delete them well, there you have it. These are 10 of the proven ways to speed up your Mac. But do let me in the comments below, what other tips have you used for speeding up your Mac? And are you using any third-party apps like Clean My Mac that I will be covering in an upcoming video? So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.